Hi there, welcome to Tournament Fishing the Deck Building Game. My name is Greg Mailer and I'm going to be demonstrating how to play the game in the solo mode. So what I've gone ahead and done is set it up, um, set the game up by shuffling the bait shop deck and putting out five cards to buy. And here's the uh, Atoma deck, which I've, or the AI deck which I've shuffled and then I put out five piles of four cards for our lake deck which is what I'm calling the reservoir deck uh, the reservoir setup excuse me uh, it's a little bit different than the um, er, the lake version um, and the normal rules and, and that's because the Atoma uh, is going to work off these five piles instead of twenty now I am working on an Atoma um, or an AI that will uh, work for both versions right now and it's kind of in work in progress um, and then also I have my basic starting deck here and it's uh, shuffled so we'll go ahead and draw five cards to see our opening hand uh, I guess I shuffled these interesting alright well, my first hand is giving me four poles and a tackle box. I don't have any lures at all, which is not really that good, actually, um, because we want to have a lure in order to cast out here and figure out what some of the stuff is and potentially catch a fish. But I don't have that. Um, however, I'm getting a little ahead of myself because... The first thing you do on the very first round uh, after you've drawn your cards is you draw and resolve the top card of the Atoma or the AI deck and let's see what it says. Okay, so first off you'll have numbers here in the top left and right or just one uh, on some of the cards and what that does is it'll tell you which card to discard in the buy pile or the, the bait shop deck supply. So. We're going to discard the very first one so we can no longer buy that. And then it says on pile five, so we'll go to the fifth pile, we're going to flip this one over. And what this is demonstrating is that um, the AI tried to cast here and catch something, but it didn't work out. Now it turns out on this one, he actually located a floating bill, which is an event. Um, and it's a good time to go over events. Um, the fish deck has 28 fish in it uh, and seven of the cards are uh, events such as this one. It's a floating bill and it says you gain two money this turn. So if I had cast it here I would get this and be able to spend it to buy some stuff in here and it just represents an event that might happen when you're in the lake and you might see some money floating in the lake. and which is very pretty rare so there's only one in the deck but it just so happened that the AI actually cast it here so when that happens and he gets an event it just gets discarded so it'll go out of the game okay so nothing really happened that turn for the AI he, he did get rid of that uh, card um, in the supply uh, and now it is our turn so since I don't have a lure um, there. Um, what I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and play the tackle box. Now, technically, the the first phase of the game is called the scan phase on your turn. And if I had had any cards that allow me to examine cards in the lake, I could go ahead and play them right now. Since I don't have any, I'm going to go ahead and skip that phase. So now I move into what's called the cast phase where you're actually casting out into the lake to see if you can catch something but you have to have one pole at least and one lure and, I don't, and as I said I don't have a lure so I'm going to use the tackle box which is pretty thematic uh, I'm kind of proud of the way I designed this one actually but um, anyway you draw the top three cards of your deck take one into your hand and place the other two back on, any, on top in any order which is a really common mechanic for deck builders but being that it's a tackle box it kind of makes sense you're drawing some cards out of your out of your deck and getting what you want 
So what we're going to do is go ahead, let me scoot some of this down so I have a play area. Scoot my hand down. So I'm going to go ahead and play the tackle box. Draw the top three cards. So I have another pull. Uh, there's a lure. And another pull. Okay, so <laughs> it turns out I only have one lure, but that's good. I'll go ahead and take that into my hand using the tackle box and put these back on top of any order. And it doesn't really matter at this point since they're both poles. They are a little di different because they have different icons. Um, but I think it's going to be okay just to do it like this and put them back. Okay, so that tackle box allowed me to get a little card draw to to actually be able to cast this turn. So what I like to do to start off, uh, since I don't know what anything is out here in the lake, uh, is to just use one pole. So I'm going to play that pole and I'm going to play this lure, which is a worm. Let's go, over, go ahead and go over this real quick. Um, the worm is a brown lure. That's the color there. So any fish that has a brown um, matching um, circle on it, uh, this worm can attract. Now, uh, one mechanic in the game is called lose. Anytime you're losing something in the game, you're going to remove it from your deck entirely. So it's kind of like a thinning of your deck. But in this game, the way I've designed it, you don't necessarily uh, intentionally um, thin your deck. It's more like a, a, a circumstance happens and you, and you lose things. So anyway, anytime you hook a fish, which if I had enough power, so this is giving me two power, um, and I had the right color, I'd be able to hook the fish. And then at that point, at the end of the turn, uh, or at the end of the cast phase, I'm gonna go ahead and lose this card. If I don't hook anything, it goes back into my discard pile at the end of the cleanup phase. But so, and it kind of just is thematic, because a worm is a live bait lure, and trust me, you go through a whole bunch of them um, if you actually are fishing. Um, they're very hard to keep on the hook. Okay, so, Anyway, um, moving on, we're going to go ahead and try to cast somewhere. Now, I don't know where anything's at, so I'm just going to kind of go to the first one and uh, see what it is. Oh, wow. So right off the bat, we know that there's a 10 power fish that takes a red lure, and it's going to roll these three dice, which I didn't show the dice yet, but here's the dice. Um, there's a white, red, and green one, and they're, they increase in difficulty. But this guy is the most powerful, one of the most powerful um, fish. There's four. Um, anyway, so he's going to roll all three. He's going to be very hard to catch. So I just need to keep, take a mental note that there's a 10 power fish there with a red thing so that I can potentially try to catch it. Now this early on in the game is going to be extremely hard to get 10. So their chances are the, the AI is actually probably going to get this one, but I'm going to try my hardest to try to catch that before he gets it. So I know that one's there, and I didn't have any anywhere close to the, I didn't even have the right lure or enough power, so let's just go to the second one and see what is there. Ah, so we got a pike fish, and this one is a good opportunity to talk about this. Uh, it can either be attracted by a yellow or a green, um, and you need eight power. It's going to roll the same amount of dice as a ten power. Uh, but it's a little bit less points, which by the way, this doubles as the points at the end of the game as well. So if I catch this, I get eight points. Now, the reason why it's not 10 in this case, even though it's wrong three dice, is because it's a little bit easier to catch. It, it can be attracted by two different lures. So I need to take a mental note that there is a, a red or a green here in the second position. So we've got a red, 10, and a red and green, eight. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the casting phase. I, I, I didn't catch anything, but I was able to get some information now about what's out there. All right, so the next phase we go into um, is the buying phase. So we look at the rest of our cards, which we have um, three poles. But the cards in this game have three functions. Um, they can be used for their action here to provide this. They can also be used um, to be discarded to avoid the dice events, which we'll, we'll see when we when we uh, hook a fish later on. 
And the last function is for buying power, which is this little, the green icons here. So right now I have three money. So I can look over here and see if there's anything I can buy. Now in the bait shop supply, here there's one extra icon on all these, which is the purple one, and it tells you how much they cost. So this four, I can't, I can't buy the fish finder, although that is a very good car. Um, the jig costs two, so I could buy that. I can't buy the sturdy pole, and I cannot buy the graphite rod. So the only thing I can buy is the jig. It's brown and green, and if I remember right, this one here was a green, oh man, I'm already forgetting. <laughs> I think it was a green and yellow. So that's part of the game. You have to kind of remember where things were. Um, and as I'm doing a demonstration, this is it's kind of harder to just because I'm have some, thinking about so much things. But anyway, um, so I'm going to go ahead and buy that for two bucks. So I'm going to put it in my hand and spin the two cards. Now I've got three different icons here. Um, and so the only difference or the only kind of strategy wise would be uh, do I want to kind of um, spin ones of different icons but it, this early on in the game I don't think it's going to matter much so we're just going to spin these two for their two money to grab that. Now that goes in my hand along with this pole. Now in this game unlike most deck builders except for like Mage Knight um, and maybe a few others um, you when you, um, at the end of your turn, you're only going to discard what you play. And anything left in your hand, you're going to keep. So, and anything you buy goes directly into your hand, which is, some deck builders do that, but, but not many. So anyway, uh, after we've done the buy phase, we're going to go ahead and do the cleanup phase. Anything you've played this turn gets discarded into your discard pile. You draw back up to your hand limit which is five cards and there's my two poles which I knew were there and I got another lure so go ahead and put those together all right um, and now you will refill the bait shop with cards and that's it that's one completed turn uh, in the game so that's kind of a general idea of how a turn is going to go. So now we'll go a little bit quicker so that we can kind of make this video hopefully not too long. But um, so let's go ahead and turn over and start the next turn. Um, start over the Toma. All right, the first thing we look at the four. We'll go ahead and remove the fourth card. So bye bye, sturdy pole. And then it says take the top card on pile four. So we will actually take this card. And it becomes ah nice so he only he pulled he caught essentially he caught this fish as if he was another player uh, um, who had just casted there and now the lake doesn't have this fish anymore and it goes into his victory point pile so he now has three points and we have nothing so that's it now we res we've resolved the atoma it's pretty nice and sweet and short and quick that's how I like to do um, solo games um, I'm not a big fan of a lot of upkeep and I like how this is the um, the table size is very or the, the table space required is very small everything kind of lines up I really like that uh, about the about the game anyway uh, now we will move on to the scanning phase but we don't have anything in our hand right now to scan with which is sort of like scrying um, so you're trying to see what's out there before you cast um, which you know is part of the strategy now we still know what's over here if I can remember right um, but so now let's go ahead and move into the cast phase um, now I know there's an 8 and a 10 point fish here and I look at my uh, I've got three poles so I could play all three for a power of six so I can't even can't even touch these guys even if I had the right lure I could now there's a potential to use this jig to discard this crank and then draw a card, but I don't know what I'm going to draw. And I've already done, yeah, I mean, just knowing, I know what the starting deck has, and there's six poles, so I know that I, I'm not going to draw another pole to get that eighth power. And even if I did, it would fully extend me 
where I didn't have any, I won't have any cards to discard. Which means if I roll any, if I, I would have to roll three dice. If I get any event, I'm not going to be able to um, subvert it. So it's not, that would be a huge gamble. I would have to basically roll, roll nothing on three dice, which is not very high odds. So I think the best bet for me is to try some different areas and try to figure out some more stuff that's out there. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and just use the crank, the yellow, and we'll use uh, this pole since I already have a yellow uh, icon. I want to try to keep in my hand. I want to try to keep icons that so I have all three icons that because that's generally better so that you're prepared for more things. So. I'm still only going with two power, because I'm just trying to kind of figure out what's out here. So I'm gonna cast on this third pile here. See what we got. Ah, okay. So we have a five green in the third pile. It's a bass. Um, all right. So that's that's a potential next turn because I've got this jig. Thing. So I uh, I might be going for that one next turn. Okay. Now I didn't catch it, so I'm gonna go ahead and look at another one. Let's look and see what this one is. Oh my. Now this one's a brown 10. So we found another 10 point fish. Okay, so it's looking like we, that five might be a potential one we can catch next turn, hopefully. All right, so that's the end of the cast phase. And now we'll move into the buy phase. Um, sometimes I go ahead and set these over to the side I've already, so that I've already, sure that I've already used them. So I look in here, this one's got two, one, and one, so I've got four by power this turn. So I can look over here, I could buy the graphite rod, which is gonna give you two power, and you get to draw two cards, which is nice. Um, the fish finder is very good too, because it's got an ongoing, meaning it's gonna last two turns in play, and you can examine up to two fish cards before casting each turn, which is it allows you to get a lot more um, scanning. And looking at fish now we've already it might not be a good one to get for us because we already know what four of them are um, but the other power it has is it says revealed fish do not double their power so if a fish gets turned over normally they will double their strength but they won't roll their dice um, so let's look over here so normally they would double their strength and or sorry when they're revealed this is gonna be a six still gonna take a, a yellow lure but they won't roll their dice so you can catch it if you have six power. Uh, and that just represents that the fish is more heightened. Uh, usually when you try to catch a fish and, you, and it gets away, it's very hard to hook them again a lot of times, unless they're a small fish that's just hungry. But the bigger ones, you know, the game fish, are not going to really hit the same thing again most of the time. So their power is going to go up. But they also, also are usually a little bit more weak because they just expended some energy. energy. That's why they're not going to roll their dice. Okay, so that's kind of just explaining the thematic um, intent behind the design. Okay, so the fishing saves are pretty cool. They're ongoing permanent. So if I got this, it would stay in play forever unless I had an unfortunate, an unfortunate event happen because you can lose um, accessories. Now, one thing I didn't mention, but the way I designed the game uh, graphic-wise is the, all the rods have gray backgrounds. All the accessories have blue backgrounds, and then the lures have green. And that's just to make it yeah, easy to identify. Um, so, actually, we have two graphite rods in play, so we could buy one of those, which I think is probably a good bet for us. Um, we don't really need to scan that much, so I'm going to go ahead and buy. Now, in the multiplayer game, these are going to be more powerful, too, just because there's 20 of them out there instead of just five. But... You know, if you get them early on, they can help you in the solo as well. So let's go ahead and buy a graphite rod for four money. Now that kind of ruins my plan because I was going to think about using the jig to um, catch this five-point fish, but hopefully next turn I will draw, be able to draw a green lure to attract it. And I've got some extra card draw, so I, I could be able to do that. And I went ahead and discard. I went ahead and discarded the cards, and <laughs> instead of playing them. So technically I was supposed to play them, and then now that the buy phase is over, I will go ahead and gather everything and discard it. 
there's no cards in this game that actually play off of the top of the discard pile because I, I actually don't like that mechanic because you have to be too technical about when you discard stuff so that you know exactly what's on top and I'd, I'd rather not have to worry about all that so or make the make you as a player worry about it either so everything now there are cards that do play off the discard pile but you can pick any one of them you want uh, on those mechanics so anyway that's kind of my philosophy on that now we discard all the cards now we will draw back up to five so go net popper and a spinner Oh, that's a green one we need. Okay, so now to get one more, we'll go ahead and shuffle real quick. Sorry about that, I will be back momentarily. All right. So let's draw one more. And we got another pull. All right, so we're looking pretty good. The only thing is we need one more power in order to get to five. Hopefully, by drawing two cards, we'll get at least one more pull. All right, so that's kind of my plan for next turn. Uh, so that's two turns down, and this is taking like 10 minutes per turn, so hopefully we can speed this up. All right, so let's go. Uh, sorry, I forgot to resupply the bait shot. Let's not forget that. All right, and then let's do the Atoma for starting round three. All right, this time we've got two cards, so we're gonna take number three and number five and discard those. And then it says, on pile one, flip the top card. Now we already know what was there. Uh, so there's a 10 point fish here and he automatically is now gotta be caught with 20 and he doesn't roll his dice. Um, but there is really no chance to get 20. So this fish finder will be almost the only way to get that um, as of this moment. So that's one of the things the AI does is he flips over cards which makes him harder for you to catch and kind of essentially blocks off this whole pile for a while. So that's one of the things he tries to do to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and we don't have anything to scan with. And I think this will be the first time we get to actually get to try to catch a fish on round three. So here we go. Um, so it's gonna all depend on this one. Now, one thing I wanna know, when you are in the cast phase, uh, you can play cards in any order you want. So I could play accessory, in any order it just to get the effects of them to kind of combo how you want them but you if you play a lure to do an, an effect on top of its color like these don't have it because they're just starting cards but um, if you get the effect of it and you play that lure you, you're stuck with that lure so that's the only kind of uh, caveat to remember other than that you can play stuff in any order so I'm gonna go ahead and play this poll and draw my two cards to see what I get. Ah, great, I got another pole, which is what I needed, and I got a crank. So, I'm gonna go ahead and play. Now, I know I'm doing multiple poles, which is kinda unthematic, like why would I have three poles? But that's unfortunately what you have to do when you're, kind of the sacrifice you make when you're designing a game. You can make it, you know, really thematic, but some of the things you're just eventually gonna have to be uh, designed to play to the game so essentially what these are doing is kind of boosting that two from this one up to a six so just think of it that way as if you're using a little bit more skill by getting that two power maybe not necessarily using three poles so i'm using this pole and getting some more kind of uh, finesse just from my angling skills okay so that kind of explains that and then i knew from the couple turn or last turn that I needed a green lure to try to catch this now here's the part where you might want to make a choice now I know what this all four of these were but I don't know what that one is now since you get two casts per turn which I didn't mention but it's in the rules you get two up to two unless you hook the very first one then you won't get the second one as soon as you hook a fish you don't get another one so if I went ahead and did this, I'm going to hook it because I know I have enough power and I know I have the right lure. But I might want to take a gamble on what, seeing what this is because that's kind of going to be beneficial. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see what this is. Ah, so this is a six power red fish and it's a pike. So now I know what's there. Now I end up knowing what is, and I know what everything is out there, which is really good. 
So now let's go ahead and cast in the spot we know where that fish was. I don't remember what it was, but it was it's a bass. And there we go. We got the we got six power. We only needed five. We got the green lure, and we're ready to rock and roll. This guy has took the bait, and we set the hook. So what you do next is you go into the reel phase after you've set the hook. Now um, he's going to roll the white and the green die because um, that's what is indicated here. And if you're playing the uh, without using the graphical version of the dice, you can use, as it says in the rule book, just different colored dice. And there is a chart in the back of the, of the last part of the rule book that shows you what the results are. Um, so that's how you're going to be able to figure out what happens here. Okay, so let's look about back at my hand real quick. And I'm looking really good, actually, because... If you remember, I said that uh, the th other feature of a card is to be used to discard during this phase to subvert different events that might happen during this roll. And what this represents is when you're reeling in a fish and you've set the hook, they do lots of different things to try to get away. So they're going to try to jump out of the water. They're going to try to go into obstacles. They just really try to get off the hook and get it out of their mouth because they realize that you know something's wrong. Uh, so the three effects are represented by a J. In the rule book, it's a J, but I, it's, it looks like a fish jumping out of water. And the O is an obstacle underwater. And then the B is actually the boat, uh, which represents them going under the boat and possibly getting stuck in the propeller and things like that. So we're going to see what happens during this reel and see how hard this fish fights. So here we go. All right, so it looks like we rolled a blank, which is great, and a O, oh, or an obstacle. So now I look over here, back over here at my hand, and it turns out I have two cards with an O. Now a card can only be discarded for one of these. So the net is very good, and it's thematic in that it can subvert any one uh, event. So it's very good, and it doesn't have an ability. So really its only use is to be discarded here. But it also is worth three. So I've made this one kind of your buy card as well. It's very powerful, so, excuse me. So, um, but it turns out the crank is not quite as powerful a card, so, but uh, it does have the, the obstacle symbol. So to subvert that, I'm essentially going to discard this card and I avoided that obstacle and I caught us a fish, boys and girls, guys and gals. Okay, so that's our first fish. So we got five points to three points. We are in the lead. And let me tell you what, this this AI is actually pretty difficult. Uh, uh, just a fair warning, you might want to use the easy version of the rules. Right now I'm going to be playing with the normal um, version of the rules, but there is an easier version. And I suggest that you play through that and try to win first because this guy is pretty tough. <laughs> okay, just a fair warning. Um, but that's kind of how fishing goes. It's not. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, and luck does play some of the factor in it. Just so, just so you know. So, all right. Now that leaves me. I only had to discard that one, so I still have the net and the popper to go ahead and buy something. I have four buy power, so we'll move back. Uh, in, uh, now this I didn't talk about this. This goes in my live well technically, and I can keep up to five fish in here. And in the multiplayer game, you're going to turn this over so that nobody knows how many points you have. Um, so it's kind of secret. And a real live well is actually inside the boat and there's this little chamber that you put the fish in and it's got water and actually a motor circulates the water out of that chamber constantly giving them oxygen so it's pretty cool. And this, So a lot of this game is actually designed with real life stuff that I've actually done myself or that I know a lot of things about such as the live well uh, and things like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and look and see what we have to buy. Now we got another graphite rod. We got the fish finder, which could help us with that. And then we've got an oak pole, which is two, two by power, three power. Hmm, I think I want to get another graphite rod because getting that extra card draw was just so good. So I think I will do that. I'll go ahead and buy 
the graphite ride. And generally in this game, the, the more draw power is going to be better. And a lot of deck builders, that's true as well. So, um, and there's only two of these in the deck. So chances are we weren't going to see two of these in one game, but we did. And that's just how luck had it. But anyway, so let's go ahead and buy that with the four buy power. And, uh, and then we'll move into the cleanup phase, discarding our cards and drawing back up to five. So whoa. one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna draw it anyway. Oh, there's our jig that we bought. And okay, there's our tackle box. All right, let's go ahead and replenish the bait supply. Ah, trolling motor. Okay, and that's the end of round three, I believe. Now, in the um, solo mode, you don't have to worry about keeping track of rounds because as soon as you resolve the last card, there's only 12, and that'll be the 12th round. So you will know that that's the final round. In the multiplayer game, you, you need to kind of uh, keep track of it, and I haven't created the um, clock card yet to um, keep track of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., so um, we just have to use some method uh, such as a D12, which I have a D12 here. You could use that or some other method that you have to come up with when you're doing the PMP. So, all right, let's go ahead and move right into round four. Okay, so one in five. We'll remove this one and the trolling motor. Oh, no. That was going to be a draw three card. That's a really good one. Okay. And then it's going to take the cup card on pile two. Now we knew it was there, if you remember, back early on. It's an eight point fish, and I believe it's yellow and green. Yeah. Yeah. So he caught that pike. So, man. Here we go. He's already up to 11 points. So, and we're at five. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we're gonna do this turn. Um, first off, uh, one way I think I'm gonna combo a little bit. Eh, no, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I might. Okay, so let's go ahead and play the graphite rock to draw our two cards. One, another pole, and a worm. Okay. And now I've come to think that I've Pretty sure I forgot what's over here. I think there's a six red there. Uh, I cannot remember what. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I can't remember. It's part of the game. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So that was my two cards. Now I've got a tackle box. I also have the jig, which can be used. I can discard to draw a card. So one. I'm thinking. I want to try to catch the six red, but I don't have a red lure. So I think one of the things I want to try to do is get a red lure. So let's go ahead and use the tackle box. I don't have enough cards, so I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle real quick. So momentarily I'll be right back. Alrighty. Now let's go ahead and draw our three cards and see what we got. We got a pull. Uh, hey, there's our red. That's exactly what we wanted. <laughs> okay, good. And another pull. So let's put, let's draw this into our hand. Oh, sorry, we're playing the tackle box. So we'll put it over here. And so I played it. We're drawing that in our hand, and then we get to put these in the uh, top of our deck in any order. I uh, don't really think it's going to matter a whole lot because I've got quite a few icons. So I'll put the fish on top. Now you could do some cool combos like um, put what you want on top and then use the jig to draw it. So those are kind of um, sort of a, you know the deck building tricks you can do, the synergy. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach our popper. Now we need to get six, gonna need to get six power. So let's go ahead and play two of our poles and make sure we have uh, quite a bit of it. Covered. Looks like I'm gonna go ahead and play that one and 
and that one. So there's our six power. And then we got, we have three. No, I'll do it like that. This, let's do it like this. So now I've got three symbols to possibly subvert against this fish. Okay, so I know what's there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the trick we did last time. I, I totally spaced out and don't remember what's here at all. Um, and I also don't know what's here because the eight got removed. So let's go ahead and look here. Now this could be a gamble because I there could be a small fish here that needs a red lure and I and I end up catching it. So but it's just kind of a gamble. Oh no! And this could happen too. Oh man, this is a good time to draw this. So this is another another gamble. And when I was casting over here, it just I had an unfortunate thing happen. And so when you're using this type of reel. Um, it is very common if you're not paying attention and you're not used to using that type. It's called a bait caster reel, to where when you cast it, you, if you don't put your thumb on the the um, spin part that holds the line, it can keep going once the lure lands and just totally do what it looks like in the picture. So, you ha this is thematic in that you're having to discard a card, wasting time getting this thing unknotted, and it just so happens that my gamble did not work out. Um, and I end up, I'm going to have to discard a card as well, so not good at all. So, but that's going to, and that's going to go ahead and get discarded out of the game as well. So which one of these do I want to discard? Mm, I don't know, actually. Kind of a gamble. Let's go ahead and do the worm, because I don't know. All right, now... I'm gonna cast in the spot where I know the fish is at. And lo and behold, there's the six. There's the six power I need. And the red lure, and he's he's taking it for a ride. So this guy's gonna be rolling the red and the green, and let's see what happens during this catch. Okay. So we ended up getting a boat, and he broke my pole. <laughs> that is a fishing pole with a, uh, let's see, a fishing pole with a marked out. So during this um, catch, he, he cracked my pole a little bit. This guy fought really hard. Now he also, the first thing you do is you, uh, during this phase, I explained the rules pretty well because it's kind of confusing. You want to do all the J, O, and B events first. Resolve those, then any of these that are going to make you lose things, you do second. And so... Um, let's go ahead and resolve that. Now I do, I'm glad I kept the jig, because if I would have discarded the jig, which I probably wouldn't have done anyway, but had I discarded the jig, I wouldn't have had it to discard, so thankfully I do. I'm going to go ahead and discard the jig, and subvert this die. Bye-bye. You didn't get under the boat, buddy. Okay, and now the last thing I'll resolve is, during the process of this, one of these poles got cracked, or... Um, and didn't didn't function correctly or something went wrong so I got to lose one of them and obviously I want to lose one of my starting poles instead of the one I bought so that's going so I'm going to go ahead and do that and lose uh, let's go ahead and just lose that one and this goes from the game it's gone and so that is Unfortunate, but we do catch another fish and we are now at 11 points. We've got a pike and a bass in our live well and So we are tied up 11 to 11 neck and neck All right, so at the end of all that I've got one card in my, in my hand only one by power There are a few cards that were our one in the deck. I think that, But there's not one out here, so I can't buy we're gonna go ahead and skip the buy phase and move on into the um, cleanup phase. Okay, and now since I wasn't able to play this, I can't just discard it. Uh, you, you keep the cards in your hand. You can't not discard just because you want to in this game. So, one straw, draw back up. Oh, yes, let's draw back up. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And let's go ahead and replenish the bait shop. All right, and resolve. Okay, 
So we'll take the third one. The diver is going to go bye bye. The and then we're going to pile four. We're going to flip it. So we'll go over here. And I don't think I know what that is. Oh, I did know. I, for, I totally forgot about that 10 point fish. Wow. Okay. So the 10 point fish, there's two 10 points revealed. And there, so those are pretty much, I can't catch them because I get 20 power. Or, yeah, this thing's been there the whole game. I could potentially buy that, maybe. Okay. So I think we're moving into round five. We're kind of cruising a little bit quicker here. All right. Um, let's see. I don't remember if I know what anything is out here. Yeah, I went to last turn. I went to try to see what that was, and I got the backlash. But luckily, that didn't ruin the um, the catch. I was still able to catch it. Luckily. Okay. So, but let's see. So, since I don't know what anything is, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go light again. So I'm gonna put out a two pull, and let's go with the crank. Just to see what's out there. That's gonna leave me with three by power. Probably not gonna catch anything, so let's go ahead and look and see what's here. Oh man. There's only four ten point fish in the in the whole deck and, and all and three of them are out here. <laughs> oh man, and and we're gonna need to start catching some of those or the AI might start snagging them from us and really just clean our clocks. So alright. We're not going to catch that one right now, obviously, so do I look at that one? I don't know what that is. Let's go ahead and look, because I, I just caught something there. Oh, wow, I almost would have caught that one if I would have had a green lure, but I had a yellow. Okay, so there's a little two-point fish there. Huh, okay, so that's interesting. All right, so let's move into the buy phase. I got three power um, to buy. Looks like the only thing I can buy, I could buy a spinnerbait. I could buy... Um, or the oak pole. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and grab a spinner bait, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Now let's get the oak pole for two. And I'll leave the spinner in my hand. So I'm going to spin the poles to buy the oak pole. And then I've got that in my hand. And so let's go to the cleanup phase. This card, go back up. Alright, those are my five cards. Replenish the bait shop. Okay, now we're ready to do the AI again. See what he's going to do this time. Ah, good, there's one of these in the deck. He's going to do nothing, which is great. And two and three, finally the fish finder gets gone. And oh man, this is one of my favorite cards that I designed this large net here so it's kind of the upgraded version of the um, standard card um, and it's going it does the same thing but it also gives you uh, an effect here if you play this you get to ignore all of these rolls so it essentially in, ensures that you're gonna catch the fish but it's five it's five to buy and it's a, it also gives you three power just like it's um, lower counterpart so but unfortunately the AI took those away from us it's probably unlikely I was going to catch it anyway but or that I was going to be able to buy it I mean okay so here we go let's move into the scan phase which we don't have anything to scan so let's go to the cast phase now I'm kind of at a thing where I know that there's a two green here and I don't really want to catch that honestly uh, I'd rather try to go for something really nice and I know there's a green one here and I do have a green lure man I could really I could really gamble to try to catch this 10 point fish uh, let's, let's let's try it I mean why not all right so I got a graphite rod graphite rod I'm gonna play to draw two cards and get two power unfortunately I need to shuffle my deck again so here we go be right back what does Rado do? He goes shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Something about truffles or something like that. <laughs> I've watched a lot of Rado videos in my time. All right. So let's draw our two cards and see what we get. We got a jig and oh, a tackle box. All right, so we're getting some combos going on here, possibly. 
Okay, so I know I'm going to for sure play the, well, no, I don't know for sure because I don't know what I'm going to draw. Okay, so let's go ahead and play the tackle box and draw our three cards and see if, which one we want to draw. Okay, so we got a popper and two poles. I'm going to need to get 10 power. Right now I've got two, five, six, seven. Mm, okay, so I definitely want to draw one of the poles into my hand. And I want to put the pole back on top. And I'm doing that so that I can... Oh, yes, this is going to work perfect. So I'm going to play the jig, which makes me... If I discard a card, and it's got the green, which I know that there's a tin green here. So this is working out great. Um, discard a card, so let's look at... Oh, I'll go ahead and probably discard the spinner. Because... You know, I don't need the green anymore. Um... And then we're going to draw this pole, which actually ends up be giving me exactly enough power, I believe. Or maybe one more, but I, I needed an extra one. Because it looks like we're going to have 2, 4, 6, 8, 11. 11 power, and we've got the green and we, that we know is there. And not only that, we have the net, which is like the perfect card to have to subvert stuff. But, man, we're going to be throwing, rolling three dice, so there's a really good chance we're going to lose this fish. But, man, at the same time, we gotta, we got to do something because the AI is most likely going to catch these things. So let's see how luck will have it. Now, do I want to gamble and try something over here? I, I know I would catch this one because there's a two there, so I'm not going to go there. Oh, and this time, the game is so tight, I feel like the logical part of me is saying... Oh no, don't try to look over here. But since this is a playthrough, let's just gamble and go for it. What is here? Oh wait. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Yeah, I feel dumb now. Okay, so this I thought that the ten point was here, but it actually was there. So uh unfortunately uh I'm not going to um cheat here because <laughs> I I have to remember where they are, that's part of the game. So I, anyway, I caught the two point fish, which is what I want to do. Well, I hooked him. And now we're gonna see what happens. I roll all three dice. I've got a net. Let's see if it's gonna be enough. Oh man, I think it was. <laughs> oh man, this is so cool. Okay, so, uh, yes. Because I rolled an obstruction and I lost, okay, so we're gonna resolve the obstruction first, and these two don't have any, these have the uh, swipe through, so we're gonna resolve those second. I have the net, which is exactly enough, to, I can discard it, and voila, I caught the fish. You fought hard though, buddy, because I'm gonna lose my lure, and I'm gonna break another pole. So, okay, let's see here. Um, this lure, uh, good job, buddy. You, you serve your purpose well. Um, you caught me a 10-point fish, but unfortunately I lost you. So you're leaving the game. Um, and one of my poles is also, I'm gonna just take another one of these guys. He's gonna leave the game, that's resolved to those two. And then, boom, put my 10-point fish up here. It gives me 21 points to 11. All right, now let's go to the buy phase, which I have no cards left in my hand, so I can't buy anything. But that's just part of the game right here. That's why I'm actually very excited about this game, because just, I don't know if you heard the excitement in my voice right then. I just got really excited, because it was just, man, that's just how fishing feels like. It feels like, you know, you just get lucky sometimes and just catch a huge bass um, by the skin of your teeth. So, yeah, that's pretty exciting stuff. I'm kind of proud of this game that I've uh, designed here. So yeah, um, not to toot my own horn, but yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So let's move to the cleanup phase. Enough of me talking. All right, so let's discard. Let's go ahead and put out, fill this back up. Let's fill our hand. One, two, three, four, five, Go ahead and resolve the AI. I'm not sure what turn we're on, but eh, 
I think we're about halfway through the game. So let's see here. And it's already been 15 minutes of this video. Oh man, that's a long video. Okay, so let's take two and four, two and four. But I'm also explaining a lot of the rules in this video. Um, which, because I wanted to do both at once to give you a playthrough and the rules instead of just doing a rules and then a playthrough. So that's why it's a longer video. This game, if I was just playing by myself, is not is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes uh, for the solo mode. Okay, so let's look at uh, this. Okay, um, pile two, flip a card, flip the top card. So I don't know what's here, I don't think. Ah, there's a little sunfish. Three point brown sunfish. Okay. Hmm, the AI. He's going to catch five to six fish. Um, that's how I designed it, to be able to catch five to six fish always. So, we'll see. Some of the strategy you'll get as you play this AI, you'll start to catch on what you need to do to beat it. Um, and, but I don't want to give that away. And this playthrough, I'm just going to kind of play without using those strategies. Because I, don't want, I want to show you the game and, and how it works. Um, more than the strategy. I'll let you figure that out as a part of the part of the cool thing about the game that you can try to figure out. Okay, so let's let's rock and roll. Uh, we don't have anything to scan once again. So let's see. Hmm. I think there's a two point fish here. I think I'm gonna leave it there. I I, I might be oh I can't do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's use a graphite rod, which has been our staple for this playthrough. To draw our two cards. Once again, I'm out of cards, unfortunately. Let's shuffle up real quick. Draw another one. Uh, tackle box. That's. <laughs> I think I've got that combo several times, but I have two of these poles in my deck, so it makes sense that I would have uh, that combo come out quite frequently, especially since I've lost so many cards from my deck, uh, which is three, I think. So it's getting thinned out to where these combos are starting to happen more often, which is how deck builders work, um, if you're familiar with them. So let's see. Um, I could use the tackle box um, to, you know, one thing I could have done is not use this, but I already, I already did it, but I could use it for its buying power if I didn't think that I could catch anything out here but all right let's just go for it why not um I'm gonna use the tackle box actually for its buy power maybe and go ahead and let's go big and try to get and go out with six power I don't know what's out there but and try to let's try to get rid of this worm and you know what's interesting I just thought about is that I could catch this fish here because I've got six power and the blue lure and it's a revealed fish so I haven't showed you that so let's go ahead and do that that will give me some points I'll, I'll be able to add a three pointer um, and then I'll have four points to buy something so, and I won't have to use these because if you remember you don't roll this dice it, once they're revealed it's just double as power so and that'll thin my deck a little bit get rid of this worm so that's what my choice is going to be this turn uh, so and I essentially just get to take it I've already got the power, I've got the right lure, boom. And he does he isn't gonna fight at all because he's he's tired out. He's took it out. So that's cool. Now let's go to the buy phase and see what we got out here. Ah, we have an artificial worm, which is a very nice card. Very, very nice card. Which artificial worms are actually one of my favorite things to fish with. They're just they really, really work well. That's why I made this one of the most powerful cards. Um, so it costs four, it's going to give you three buying power, it can divert any three of the events, just like the net, and when it's played, you choose the color. So it's, you know, normally they have a color automatically assigned, some of them have two, multiple, this one you can actually choose it, so if you know what's out there, you know, you don't even have to have that color, you can just choose it, so it's pretty powerful. Representing how effective I, I feel that type of lure is. Um, so, we, we also have the fishing hat, which I've made um, kind of be like a, 
a buy power um, boost so it's a permanent thing that you're kind of wearing so as soon as you get it you can play it and it'll last uh, permanently out there um, and it'll give you two buying power every turn now this has been a great one to have early on but this late in the game I don't think I want to get this um, and I don't have five anyway I've only got four so and then there's the spinner bait which is a really good lure um, I think overall though this artificial worm has got to be my, the way I go so I'm gonna get that spin my four and then we'll move to the cleanup phase once again and we'll discard the cards Now, one thing I want to note here real quick is, see now, this part of the lake is totally gone now. There's no more fish there or anything. And so what you want to do is make sure that you, the reason why I've set it up like this is so I've got five piles. And so Because the AI plays upon these piles, so I don't want you to think that, like now there's, these are four, like this one's number four. This is still number five. This is still number two. So we got to make sure that we keep that spot there. So let's see what the AI is going to do. Okay, so well, let's see what we got. All right, a one and a two. So I'm going to be gone. Pile five. And take the top card on pile five. See what he got. Ah, it was that little two point fish that I left over there. Hint, hint. Sometimes you. <laughs> uh, I won't, actually, I won't, I won't say anything. Okay. So let's see. All right, let's move into the scan phase. Once again, we don't have anything to scan. And then we'll go ahead and move to the cast phase. Do I even know what anything is out here? Um, I'm not for sure that I even know what anything is. So artificial lure, I could pick it. I'm gonna have to pick a color and I don't know what's out there. But that's the only lure I have. Now, once again, I do have the graphite rod to draw some cards and might as well, let's do it, boom. It's always good to draw more cards. So boom. Ooh, I've got a green lure. So I might want to use the green lure and save this for later. And maybe use it for its buy power. So what do I have over there? I could buy the fishing hat to do this, but okay. Um how much power do I have? I've got two, four, seven, nine power. Hmm. And that. Huh. Let's just go ahead and put out a bunch of power out here. So I've got nine power. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and sh just shoot out a green worm. And then I'm kind of just doing this as a shot in the dark, because um, I've got plenty of things to subvert now, and I've got plenty of buy power. In fact, I've got six. Wow. Okay. So. Let's go ahead. I, I think, yeah, that one just got turned over. Let's see what this is. Oh, man. That's so close. So there's an eight-point fish here, brown and yellow. A nice bass there. But I, I, I used a green lure, so all right, let's, let's turn that one back over. Now, in multiplayer, I want to talk about this real quick. When you do this in multiplayer, you want to keep this hidden. So you'll have 20 of them out here to start. You're going to look at this secretly and so that only you know what that what is there so we'll, and then we're gonna put it back what was that if we didn't catch it okay so now uh, the only other one those are like I said are blocked off and let's see what we got here on this one. Oh man so once again I don't have the right lure but that gives me some great information for next turn it's really great because I know I can't remember, I still can't, I can't remember what that one was, uh, but okay, so I've got a brown and a, and a, and a red, so that's what I'm be, I might go for that one, if the AI doesn't get it, and if not, I don't remember what that was, but I think there was a brown one, oh man, I forgot, okay, so let's go ahead and reel those up, and we've got six points to spend in the buy phase, alright, so I could buy the fishing hat, I could buy both of those, that's what I'm doing, no-brainer I'm buying 
both of these because that's going to give me quite a bit of options. Uh, yeah, I can discard. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So that's what's going to be in my hand. Wait, do I want to do that? Because I might want to keep the artificial worm or the net. Yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to just buy the jig because I know the jig can be used to catch that one. So I'm going to buy the jig with the artificial worm. I'm going to keep the net so that I have better odds of catching it. All right, I need to shuffle real quick. fishing hat and pile one finally he's going to take the top card on pile one so that 10 point fish he just caught a 10 point fish it's been sitting out there a long time and he just said man i'm gonna go ahead and go for it so the score now is 28 plus 5 23 wait 18 plus 5 23 and mm, what do i have 24 yeah 23 to 24 so it's neck and neck and chances are he's probably going to get that one too. So I really need to get this eight point fish. And maybe even that one if I can as well. So that I can really up my odds of winning. So, okay. So, but I just now looking out here and I am really did not get a good hand. So this is not going to go well. Oh, but look at that. Five points, you may draw a card. Hmm. That might be the card that gets me both of these. Or at least one of them next turn. Because it looks like this turn, I'm not really going to be able to even get 8 power at all. Now I could look and see what's here though. Okay, so I'm going to put out my pole. I'm just going to the cast phase. I don't have anything to scan. Um, unfortunately, I did not get any card draw from my rods that I normally get. So um, I could discard a card to draw a card, but. It's not going to give me eight. There's no way. And I probably want to save this to try to buy this rod, maybe, with these two. So, hmm. Let's go ahead and just use this crank to kind of see what's out there. Test the waters. Yeah, that's a good the pot. So, ah, we got a five-point brown bass here. Okay. It's good to know. And I don't... I, oh, yeah, and then I already know what these two are. Yeah. But I forgot what that one was, so let's look what it is. Yellow and brown. Yellow and brown, and I believe that one was like red and brown or something. So, all right. Let's go ahead and buy that guy there. I really want to buy that one because there's only one of these in the deck. It's a Lunker Rod. Uh, it gives you five power, and you can draw a card from your discard pile, which is going to be really great. So I'm going to get that with my jig and my net. Spin those. Okay, so I've got a monkey rod and a spinner. And let's go ahead and do the cleaning phase. Put out their pitch up cards again. And draw the AI. We're kind of rolling here now. Ah, okay, we got we got this one. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the second one. So bye bye diver. Um it says take the highest VP of a revealed fish card. The angler's choice of a tie. So you look out here and essentially the biggest fish this reveal he's gonna take, so yeah, he just got ten more points. Wow. So he's at twenty-eight plus five, thirty um three. So thirty-three to what was it, twenty-four. Thirty-three twenty-four. So he just went up nine points there. And we have two rounds left. I can see how many cards are here. Two rounds, well, three rounds, because there's this one included. All right, so we really need, oh, I forgot to draw one. So one, two, come on, get, oh, man. That's a huge bummer. Huge, huge, oh, wait, wait, wait. 
Ah, I thought I, I thought I wasn't gonna get, be able to get eight power because I look here and I only have seven, but I remembered this lunker rod. So uh, I'm not gonna scan anything. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lunker rod to draw something out of the discard pile. Hopefully I can get another pole. Yeah, there's another pole. And draw that from the discard pile because I need it to get to the eight. So there's five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I believe this is brown. Oh man, now I've already forgotten. Ah, but I have the artificial lure. I know both of them, I think, had a brown. So I'm going to. I don't have a brown out here, though. I don't want to waste this turn at all. So I'm going to go ahead and hopefully these two are going to be enough to subvert things. Hopefully. And I'm going to play this. When I play it, I'm going to choose brown. So, nine points with the brown lure. And I believe this one, yeah. Boom, we cut this. We hooked this bass. So, he's gonna roll three dice. We've got two cards to subvert. Let's see what happens here. Oh, wow. I'm getting lucky on these rolls. Okay, so nothing happened on that die. And we have no events, so I get to keep these cards in my hand. But, Unfortunately, we did have some pretty bad things that happened. We lost our lure. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but by artificial lure, he's gone. And we would have lost an accessory had we played it. Um, but thankfully, we didn't play any accessory and we had none in our hand. If we didn't, um, this is the discard pile. So don't look at that. Um, but we don't have, we, we didn't play an accessory and we don't have one in our hand. If, if we had played one, we'd lose it. But if we had it in our hand, we just discard it. So that's how you resolve this one. So that was a lucky roll, and we caught the fish. Boom. So that puts us pretty close to the AI. I don't even want to count anymore. <laughs> but let's 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 just figure it out because we got a couple more turns. Let's uh, we're well over the hour mark. So let's go ahead and see if we can finish this off. Um, I got two by power. Is there anything worth two? No, everything's higher, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip the buy phase. I'm gonna go ahead and put that there real quick. Uh, let's draw it up. One, two, three. And then let's resolve the AI. Pile three, take the top card and the five. So we're gonna discard that. So pile three, which is this one. Ah, so he, another event happened. And what's cool is this happened on his take card um, action, so luckily he didn't get anything. We got really lucky that time. So, wow. In this playthrough, we've gotten three events so far. There's really only, I think, four in the deck, so anyway. So that's what we did for him. And now let's see what we're going to do. No scanning. We're going to cast. Um, let's go ahead and play our... Two, roll two cards again. One, two. Oh wow! I'm getting a huge combo, kind of like you do in Dominion. I, I remember in Dominion, you know, just sit there and draw like 15 cards in one turn. So let's go ahead and draw two more from the other, second draft out rod. Oh, and there's our tackle box combo. <laughs> We're just we could we could catch another really good fish here, and I believe brown is what I needed. Uh, okay, so there's two, four, six, eight. So there's the eight I need to get this fish, I believe. And I believe it's a brown. But I, you know, you know one thing I forgot, guys and gals, is that this worm, I was supposed to lose it after they caught that little, uh, this little three point fish here. I don't know if you remember that earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that I had lost that and go ahead and draw another card real quick. So I'll shuffle these up. I don't think it affected anything because this is the first time I've drawn that worm again, I believe. So I think we're good. Okay, so um, I've got my eight power and I believe I need a brown lure, which that would have been the brown lure I needed. And I believe this is like a yellow and a brown, so I am I totally can't get this. But thankfully, here's my tackle box. Once again, I'm gonna play it and see if I can get a yellow lure. So I got the net. Oh, the 
plunker rod hmm. and the jig. I'm going to go ahead and take the jig into my hand and put the lunker rod back on top. Alright, and let's go ahead and clear our jig. And when I do, I'm going to um, discard a card. Let's discard. Uh, Just the popper. Oops. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to draw a card. So I've got the longer rod, which I could play, and then draw this. Um, could play that and then draw this pack out of my discard pile, but I don't think I want to do that. I'm kind of overkilling myself here. So I don't believe I can catch that because I really think it was yellow and brown, but I'm going to. Wait. That is a brown. Huh. Okay, so I'm going for it. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, sometimes I thought that was a red. That's, uh, I think I need to change some of the coloring on this because the red and the brown are actually pretty hard to um, distinguish. And that's just my fault for not uh, recognizing that sooner. But anyway, so I got lucky and it was a brown. So it was exactly what I needed. So I've hooked this fish. And I've got a plethora of things to subvert this, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to catch it. But I have three, and I've been rolling really good, so hopefully I continue to roll good. And looky there. So I've got only one non-X'd out, and it's the, the fish, so I could subvert it with either the lunker rod or the oak pole. That's kind of an easy decision, because I want to keep that one, obviously. So, I'll keep these in my hand, and... Then, I would lose an accessory. Oh, very cool. I guess not very cool for me, but um, I did play accessory this turn, so this gets lost from the game. Look at all these cards that have lost from my pile. Wow. Okay, so, and then I break another pole. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of one of these. Bye-bye. All right, but I caught the fish, and now here presents an opportunity for me to show you this. Um... I've got six, now six fish in my live well, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy. He's going to be, normally in the in the normal multiplayer game, you would put it back out here, and somebody else could catch it, and it's revealed now, if they wanted. Um, but for the, the solo game, we're just going to remove it from the game, set it over here somewhere. Um, and now we are going to essentially have gained ourselves plus five more points. So we're looking pretty good, and we've played a very good game thus far. But the man, he is just tough. I have to tell you, it's hard to beat him. Okay, so I've got quite a bit I could buy this turn, but I don't know if I want to. I think that I'm kind of set. Um, let's see what we've got out here. I mean, oh yeah, there's the trolling motor with four. But I don't want to give up my lunker rod. I think I'm gonna. Huh. I might play fly rod. Yeah, I'm gonna take, so the fly rod only costs one. I'm gonna go ahead and use the pole, why not? Spend it to get the fly rod in my hand. Cause it's three power. But if the fish, now on the, in your, I didn't print this one out with it, but on the files that you're gonna be having, there's a fish logo in the background here. So it kind of tells you more that if the fish is power, so the fish's power, not not your power that you're playing in play, is greater than six, then you lose it. So the fly rods are very flimsy, and so if the fish is bigger than six, it's gonna break your rod, and you're gonna lose this one. But you do get his power for that turn. So anyway, it's just more, like I said, this game I've tried to design as thematic as I possibly could, and so you're gonna see things like that. And you, if you've uh, been a fisher, then before you're gonna kind of know um, what to look for. Okay, so I believe that that's all I'm going to buy. And let's go ahead and go to the cleanup phase. So let's discard a card. Let's put now the last turn. You don't really need to do this. I'm gonna do it anyway because you're not gonna be able to buy anything the last hand anyway. So you don't really need to put out the cards on the very last turn. So you can skip doing this part on the very last card and not even put out the cards either because so kind of repeating myself and I'm getting kind of tired, but 
Anyway, let's see. Um, we're going to, on pile three, flip the top card. So he's not going to be getting any more fish. One, two, three. We're flipping this. Ah, <laughs> cool. This is perfect. Uh, this is a blank card. And if you see it, you essentially, in the multiplayer game, you're going to put it back down and nobody's going to know it's there. So somebody else might find the blank thing and just kind of waste a cast. Uh, so in this case, when I flip that over, it's just going to be essentially wasted and we're going to put it, put it out there. It's sort of an event, really. Just like you cast it and nothing was there. Okay, so we have one more turn to maybe up our points, but we've, we've really scored really well, so... We'll see if we can do that. Um, we have two piles. Uh, let's go ahead and put out our lunker rod to draw some, probably like the jig again, maybe. Because it's, yeah, I'm gonna draw the jig because it's gonna give us the best chance of hooking something that's brown or green. I also discard a card to draw a card. So let's go ahead and discard Sorry, I'm not pointing at the thing. All right, I'm gonna discard this pull to draw. Hmm, might as well draw the graphite rod if I really want to be ridiculous. Nah, I'm not wasting any more time. I'm gonna draw this oak pull. This oak pull. I'm gonna put this is eight. All right, so. Hmm. So we got eight points out there. That should catch us pretty much anything. I don't think there's any more tan out there. So I'm gonna keep these in my hand and see what we got. So here we go. What is this? Huh, I, I had to actually remember, I did reveal this at one point. So anyway, we hooked the five point fish and unfortunately it's not gonna matter if we catch it because we've already got five. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish it out and We'll go ahead and roll our two dice just to just to be thorough. We got a jump. Let's see if we can divert it. Yes, we can. And for you know, in this game, I played very well and got very lucky with the dice. But you're not every game you play, you're not going to be able to subvert the dice this easy. Trust me. I'm just kind of getting lucky. Um, and then I did lose my lure. But the problem is, I, instead, of, I'm getting lucky with subverting and catching the fish. But man, I am just really getting my lures hammered. But by lure. And anyway, folks, that is the last round, and the game is complete. Um, unfortunately, this five-point bass is not going to get anything else, but I can put it over here saying that, uh, you know, I caught a total of seven fish, which is pretty good in over 12 rounds to be able to catch seven fish. So I, I actually played very well. And we can go ahead and total up the points to see who won. The Atoma or the AI Angler had 28, 31, uh, 33 points. I had 18, 26, 32. Is that right? I actually beat him? Hold on a second. 26. 16 and 10 is 26, 32, oh my goodness, 37, I beat him, it, oh wow, I'm so happy I beat him because uh, it's very rare to win, so this is great, the very first, you know, playthrough that I actually recorded all the way through, and I actually won as well, so <laughs> that's pretty cool, and I had some really great moments, and I think I, I feel like I um, presented the game pretty much what you're going to see and, and the fun you're going to going to have as you're playing at least in the solo player and so i hope you enjoyed this and i hope it gets you kind of a, a primer on all the rules and allows you to see if you want to print this game out and you know and try it out i, I would really appreciate it if you would it would give me some feedback because i eventually do want to really you know pay for um to pay for good graphics and, and good uh, art and get this because um, this is stuff I get and I'm just a novice so um, yeah I want to get good art and good uh, graphics and maybe even take it to Kickstarter or something like that if lots of people like it so anyway it's almost been an hour and 20 minutes so I'm going to sign off 
Once again, this is tournament fishing, the deck building game. I hope you enjoyed it, and I know I enjoyed presenting it. So, I'm Greg Mayler signing off. Good night.